The Nation. The whole new English daily talk show with interesting guests. Discover in various fields. And now on TV channel 502. visual artist and she of course explores her experiences of dance and living through lines and colors we'll be able to see some of her work in a short while but let's talk to cj first hello and welcome cj how are you today good it's fantastic to have you in the studio i've seen some of the stuff that you've done i've seen some pictures of uh, your work uh, and i understand that you have uh, uh, you're showing a new uh, body of work yes. called innovations yes. so before we go into you know the, the in-depth uh, finding out a little bit more about your inspiration let's talk about this body of work innovations um what inspired it and um, why is it the way it is because I, I think we had a short chat earlier that this is not your traditional form uh, that you were trained in yes yeah. so how did it come to be yeah so uh, i studied art in us mm -hmm. uh, Dartmouth college mm -hmm. and uh, uh, when i finished art you know i'm trying to commit to this career as an artist mm -hmm. and then uh, you know uh, we have to find our visual language that say okay this is cj's work this is who i am okay, this is who i am and this is the style i do the language the visual language and it's really hard when you are in oil painting and acrylic mm -hmm. because it's essentially a, a european medium right now comes from the renaissance period and 500 years and um no matter how much i'm well versed in it mm -hmm. uh it's still hard to to strike to a viewer or a collector that says Oh, this is a work from a Malaysian artist. How do you show the authenticity? Yeah. And so I applied for a fellowship to come back to Malaysia last year mm. to study with a Chinese ink painter, Dr. Chia Pencil, mm. who actually also just showed his retrospective work in the National Visual Arts Gallery right. this past August. Right. And so the idea behind it is to rediscover images of home. Mm. What strikes me as a Malaysian artist um, and how to communicate my art to a wider audience, right. you know, because uh, I'm based in the US. Okay. And so when I found ink painting, mm -hmm. I felt like I was free. Right. Because I've always been writing in Chinese, I've always done calligraphy. Right. And lines were not stressed in the Western art education. Right. It was always the oil, the painting, the color, and texture. Texture, right. yes. Um, and so when I discovered the line, I was like, wow, how do I? go into this and um, it's not easy because I come from an abstract art background and the traditional Chinese art uh, has a format as well mm -hmm. you know you typically uh, is a landscape painting yes um, how you would see on walls yes, yes. In, yes. in Chinese houses and even co uh, co coffee shops and stuff yes it's yes. a typical look and uh, this is seen uh, and of course we can see uh, you in the process of creating this uh, one of the pieces of innovations yeah uh, perhaps you can, uh, what I really want, because I watched this video as well earlier, what I wanted to know is, do you actually visualize what you're going to draw first, or you just have that piece of paper there and then you just like, go? How does that work? It's, it's, uh, it's to free the mind first. Right. Uh, when I paint, it's, um, uh, it's very spontaneous and intuitive, mm. so the rational mind actually takes a back step. Right. It's usually, uh, you, you start with a stroke. Right. You start with a stroke and then you start to balance. It's a balancing act between the colors and the ink. Right. And so uh, in my mind, it's a lot about jumping into it, making quick decisions, and that's a very exciting part for me. Right. Uh, it's almost like getting into trance as well. When you right. listen to music and you're very into yeah. it, your head starts to shake, yeah. you start jumping up and down, and, and that's the kind of uh, spontaneity that, yeah. that um, our body can respond to. Yeah. And so when I do that, my, my hands just grab 
grab whatever color you know I pre-prepared around me, yeah. and then um, first line leads to the second line leads to the third, yeah. and then once you see all the big strokes, you're like, okay, there needs some texture, yeah. some little dots here and there. Details coming in. Details coming in, yeah. and you're composing as you go. It's yeah. almost like a music improvisation. It's almost like jazz. It, it sounds a little bit like dance as well because it has yeah. that same. Uh, Process because dance, uh, you allow the music to take you, and therefore the the the, the form happens, the 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 visual art starts. Yeah, and this is some quite like what you're explaining. Yeah, you know, that the re relation to that is yeah, it's quite close. Yeah, I'm very interdisciplinary in how I think about things. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if rhythm compels me to draw a line, mm -hmm. then a dancer's body, uh, I have a visual of a dancer's body mm -hmm. in my head when I said. How does she dance in the space? Because mm -hmm. I, I regularly sketch um, live performance, yeah. dancers or drummers or musicians playing. I like to catch whatever line I see at that moment. So being in that time frame of uh, a performance is very important to my painting as right. well because I finish all in one go. Right. I don't wait. I mean, I might do some editing right. afterwards, but that would be the rational mind kicking Coming in already. Yeah. 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 So you avoid that as much as possible. You want it to be a true interpretation of yeah. that moment in time. That moment in time. Right. Okay. So uh, can is, is this a process that can be repeated or is it something that uh, there is, because the body of works usually have the whole, it's like a flow of things. Like when you're in that moment, there is a, a, a whole scheme of things that sort of form. So does that happen mm -hmm. for your... Uh, what I think the method repeats. The method that is a spontaneous process right. repeats, right. and there's a rational mind after that to edit little things. Yep. Um, it and then after that you find some some verse or poem to to complement the painting. Mm -hmm. It's it's still within uh, the traditional uh, format of Chinese ink painting, mm -hmm. but there's no one painting that is the same because right. there's. No one moment is the same. That's right. The time has passed, and yes. then we live the next next day. Yes. So today's work is different than yesterday or tomorrow. Even if I choose the same color, right? If I started with the same brush, stroke, same stroke, right? I would think differently, and I have to honor that quick thinking process. Right. Yeah. So, um, I, how many pieces uh, make up this uh, innovation? Um, this time I'm showing thirty five pieces okay. uh, of various size. The biggest size is. Um, this one here is a uh, hundred and twenty-two cm by sixty. All right. What yes. we're seeing right now uh, is uh, from uh, another body of work, right? Yes, that was from a uh, rhythmic impressions. That was uh, two thousand and fourteen March. And this looks like it's acrylic, yes. Yes, acrylic, acrylic on paper. Right. And this is more uh, honoring the rhythm right. and the texture in the acrylic paint. Okay. Yeah, this one here is more honoring the line and the ink. That is very flat, right? Because yeah. uh, it, it it it's like that paper, that Chinese mm -hmm. uh, calligraphy paper as well. It yeah, has that, has that look and feel and that, that texture as well. Yeah, and it's very water based, right? And so you have to understand water really well. Mm -hmm. How the ink, uh, mixed with the water, mixed with the color, mm -hmm. and 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 that's in a way it's it's a quicker process because mm -hmm. water. You know, if you want to do wet on wet, it dries up. Yeah, it dries up. <laughs> well, acrylic, you, you kind of... You can change you can, it. Yes, you right. can change, you can actually scrape it off as well. Right, so yeah. does it really reflect as well? I mean, uh, this just uh, came to me, like uh, the, the medium that you work with, the, the, the material that you work with, is it reflective of the person itself as well? Because yes. some people like, you know, they like the ability to be flexible and change. And then uh, today I see this to, uh, 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 five minutes later, I want it to look different and therefore, uh, the material allows you to, whereas this not so much. Yeah, I think we all give our own ourselves per perimeters when we do painting. Mm. And for me, I like the quick tempo mm. because I force myself to think on my feet. Mm. And for some people, uh, they prefer the time mm. to 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 look from afar, to deliberate, yes, to right. ponder, to to stare at it for a few hours yeah. and that's a legitimate process as well yeah. and uh, you know oil painting dries very slowly yeah. so you can almost have a longer time to contemplate your piece yeah. and some of the master artists spent months or years to complete one piece because they can always change their composition. It's a little bit sculptural that's uh, yes. in that sense. Yes, it's very sculptural. Right. Okay. Yeah. No, uh, I mean, uh, do you foresee that, you know, I mean, I think with all artists, there is no permanence in terms of form. Uh, it's just a, a, an expression. Mm -hmm. And um, 
where do you see yourself next? I mean, like you started off classically with acrylic and oil, and now there's this ink mm -hmm. and this this uh, calligraphy and um, that, that that forms. Or do you see where where could be next? Or do you already have a vision of that? I think there's a freshness in how I I, I do this. Uh, uh, Chinese ink painting right now. I try to bring the Western abstract expression mm -hmm. into the Chinese ink, which and, and the colors too. The mm -hmm. colors are very, uh, uh, how do you call it? Incon unco how do you call it? Unconventional. Unconventional. Unconventional yeah, right. to the Chinese ink painting that that is more subtle. Yeah. So in a way, they, they see more of my personality in mm -hmm. this body of work. Mm -hmm. And but you know. Uh, we mentioned games and stuff, so I, I sometimes organize an event such that there is live musicians or live dancers mm -hmm. and I set up a table next to it and paint life. Right. And so I would really want to explore what is it to paint life in front of an audience. Because right. these body of work is still done, you know, that one piece is recorded on a, vi uh, yes. a video but the others are still uh, done in solitary in my own studio. Right. So what is it to be... Um, uh, standing or surrounded by viewers and dancers uh, at the same time and then I do my painting. A lot of people say that I would be stressed out, yeah. uh, there would be a lot of pressure, yeah. but I, my own argument is that when you are in it yeah. and when you're on stage performing, even though there are thousands of people, you still lose yourself in it. Right. You still get to be yourself and being almost entranced in your own world right. performing. So how does it look like in painting? We really look forward to something like that happening soon. Yeah. Hopefully we'll be able to witness it. And of course, if it does happen, I'm sure there'll be some video that we'll be able to watch. Yeah. 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 Now, um, what I really want, I mean, we sounded about this conversation before this um, uh, interview started, that uh, the, the true essence of being an artist, I mean, uh, like I mentioned, a lot of people have talent, but not a lot of people take the leap mm -hmm. to actually commit to uh, pursuing that passion. Mm -hmm. And how is it that you have made that step, you know? Mm -hmm. And what's the process like? how difficult, what the challenges are, mm -hmm. and uh, where do you see yourself? Uh, I mean, uh, from this commitment, I can see that it's something that you're going to pursue like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, but what's the journey going to look like? Yeah. Um, it's really uh, tough. It's really tough uh, to commit yourself as an artist full time. Mm -hmm. You need all sorts of support yeah. from family, from um, partners, partners yeah. my, uh, you know, married, and um, uh, how to live a balanced life. Right. I, I think my first painting teacher said it the best. Right. So he said that if you want to be an artist, how do you include it in your everyday schedule? Right. Including eating, yeah. doing sports, yeah. uh, watching TV, being yeah. with your family, yeah. and arts. Right. Like if you can't fit it in your 24 hour a day schedule, right. then forget about it. What does that mean? How does that, how does that Because function? it is as important as eating, yeah. as sleeping, as resting, as traveling. Right. Art is that important to you. That's why you want to include it in your life. Right. And so when I make that commitment, I say yes. I want to make it as important okay. as the other things I do. In so, what's the discipline that you put into your life to make this happen? So, you know, it's um, it's a uh, like I use the anecdote of a, a fashion designer because it's more uh, visually uh, familiar for people. Right. You design a body of you know, maybe ten suits or yes. ten clothes, right. and then you have a fashion show. You show your work, yeah. and then hopefully there are some buyers, one yes. or two, yeah. uh, present present in the fashion show yeah. and then they will contact you and buy the body of work. And then there might be reproduction theater. And there will be mass production and, and it will be in stores and it will be in the market. Um, I think it's pretty similar in the art world mm -hmm. except that there is no fashion show. No commercialization that way. No. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, you, you need to have gallery who trust you. Yeah. Uh, you need to have collectors who follow up with you. Yeah. I, I have a mentor who told me uh, you have to call a collector 12 times before they finally make uh, a sale. Right. And, and so there's all these uh, mentors advising me right. what it's like to be in the market of art. Right. And, uh, and uh, how many people attend an art show? Right. How many among them are, are truly interested in, in, in buying? Right. And so if I think too much about that, I wouldn't produce uh, the work that truly uh, is authentic for me. Yeah. Yes, because there's a whole different business behind it, just like just like a fashion designer. Right. But there's also the very uh, essence of me that I really want to put out in the world and yeah. really want 
like to inspire people. Something that you're proud of. And we yeah. saw the whole body of work that uh, will be shown uh, during innovations. And tell us about what's happening here. It's uh, happening on the 21st of November. So uh, the opening reception is 21st of November. Yes. It's a Saturday at 3 o'clock. Yeah. And the place is in uh, Jeff Jeff. Art Gallery. All right. Is that Jalan Sultan? Jalan Sultan Complex Soleno. Right. It's on the first floor. Okay. And um, uh, uh, the opening guest will be my own mentor, my teacher who I've learned from, Dr. Chia Tinsel, yeah. and the other artist, Dr. Fu Kong. Okay. And if you want to find out a little bit more about CJ, there's the website that we've got to cjwu.com. Uh, all the information is there, there's videos, uh, you've got to contact. If you find that any of the art inspires you and you're inter interested to buy our show, or place it in, on your wall. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's time to support our artists uh, yes. in terms, because I think a lot of people do not understand the importance of art in community and in culture. Perhaps you would like to share your views and thoughts on that as a closing statement. Um, I think we art art is very honest. Yeah. It's it's an uh, we try to be very honest, yeah. and so it, it's almost another world from reality. Mm. And uh, when it almost becomes cheapens mm -hmm. if you always talk about commercializing right. or, or, or selling. Mm -hmm. uh, the truest essence of art is really about the soul mm -hmm. and about, for me, it's about the human spirit mm -hmm. that, sh that really unites us all uh, in the world. Mm -hmm. like, it really knows no boundaries, mm -hmm. no language even, it's mm -hmm. just visual. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, no race or no nationality. Mm -hmm. And that's what I really enjoy being that because I connected to artists from different countries and world and we still speak the same thing from the heart and so uh, I really invite people to learn how to explore see that yeah. in, in art yeah not just the, the value I mean yes there's a value yeah. but still yeah Yes, thank you very much, CJ. We uh, wish you the best uh, in your showing of innovations and we look forward to seeing more work from you. And please, uh, viewers out there, if you have the time, uh, anybody can go in and watch and have a view of the gallery. Yes, well. yes, it's an open gallery. Okay, is that Jeff Art Gallery? It's at and the sh Art? it shows until 29th. On the 29th of November, yeah. and the gallery opens from 11 to 6 except for Monday. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So, all the time that we have uh, on today, uh, we'll be back as usual tomorrow. Thank you for the news that's coming right up right now.